a drilling engineer comes to the office, and then he comes to the office early in the morning, and he needs to deliver a, a, a program to you by the end of the week. He's delaying on delivering the program. So you need to go to him and go like, listen, you need to get a drilling program done. I need it mm -hmm. signed by today the there because of timelines and stuff like that. But the guy is probably having marital issues at home. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's lost his focused. mind. He's not focused and stuff like that. So as a manager, you need to have a lot of emotional intelligence. Okay. So yeah. you've said a lot about um, advancement in technology. Yeah. And it just tells me that there are lots of new opportunities for young people who want to go into the space. Because now you're talking about remote drilling and, mm. and all that. What are some of the interesting things they can consider if they want to specialize in these corners? So what I would tell them is it's important to try as much as possible now in your career to have something to do or should know something about IT, information technology, oh. AI, artificial intelligence, large data, programming, and okay. stuff like that. So we've, the, the industry has advanced so much that right now, so the drilling process I was telling you earlier on, where you drill the conductor casing, or you jet the conductor casing, you pull all the way up to surface, and then now you have to ride. So when you are pulling up to surface, it's not just pull one like a tread. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You pull, you be. break, you pull, you break. It's because the drill pipe is joined together to get to that point. It's a lot of time. Yeah. And time is money. Because all these rigs and all these things that you're using, you and pay by the day. They are chartered yeah. and you pay by the day. Mm -hmm. So the day is expensive. So anything that will save me a few hours or a day is very important. And it's very welcome. So the oil industry encourages people to share Lots their ideas and all that. Yes, and, and things AI. like that. So now we have a technology where I can hook up my design in such a way that I can jet in the conductor casing, mm -hmm. activate a tool, and drill ahead and drill myself. So I can drill my conductor and my surface casing together. together. So after, once, wow. after I've jetted the conductor and I allow it to soak yeah. and it's good to go, I drill the surface. Also, as technology is developing now, there's so much done within a shorter period of a time. A shorter period of time, wow. yeah. So a guy studying IT now, can just um, specialize in some kind of programming yes. that can create, I mean, um, solutions on the rig. Exactly. Right? So for, before we do this, earlier on I was talking about the softwares we use to do all our well designs and stuff like that. So the likes of the Slumberjays and the Halliburtons and the Bakers and all these other people have softwares that they've developed over the years mm -hmm. that allows us to do the work that we used to do initially on paper and handwriting yeah. and stuff like that. So what you need to do is, if someone who is, let's say, a drilling engineer is very good with programming, yeah. IT and stuff like that, he can come in, he understands what the drilling process is. He understands what we need, what we need to put together to simplify the process. So he can go in, program something, mm -hmm. and then give us a means of ways of Cutting down, because for us, time is money. So if you can cut down the time, but we need to get something done. Is it for a pure IT person who is not an engineer per se to veer in there? So what they need to do now is, now you are the IT guy, you understand all the programming and the softwares mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and you are interested in the oil and gas industry Good. as well. And you want to join the likes of the guys who are doing all those drilling process mm -hmm. and all that you first of all need to get in. That's the most important thing. You need to get into the, co into the company. Mm -hmm. Certain companies, like uh, the guys who develop the software and stuff for us, like that, pick these guys, mm -hmm. and all these guys need to do is to understand the basics. And okay. all these... Just, just be trained on yes, the system. On the okay, system. This is what goes on in the rig. Exactly. Then they can put then it they together can, and Yes. Create. So it's a whole project. So everything we do is like a whole project. So something yeah. like this where... You have all this remote drilling and then automations and stuff. It's a project. The oil and gas actually invest a lot wow. in those projects. And they put a team in the project. So in the how team how like that. How many people are there usually on the, on the rig? So on the rig, you'd be amazed to know that we will probably have between 100 to 200 plus people. Wow. How, at the how time. is livelihood there? Um, 
you it depends on it depends on yeah I mean, life on the rig. So, so it depends on whether you like confinement okay <laughs> so it's a it's a confined space not like in a bottle or something like that but yeah. is a is like any other ship mm -hmm. or vessel or anything like that so live out on the rig on a very good rig is amazing okay honestly because it's because of built all the good food because oh. of all the good food <laughs> and because of all the people all the yeah. cultures and we are all set up in one place and yeah. our target is that hole we are drilling mm -hmm. or that work we are doing on the on a well or something like that yeah because it's often engineers and um all other people no. from all over the world we have who we have, in a particular we have rig caterers we have um, uh, the, chefs. The, the chefs we have the vessel captain yeah. we have guys who are looking after like literally so all everything everything you can imagine being done on a vessel or in the hotel a, a, a little is town on its own. a little it's actually a community on its own and yeah. it's such a way that we work 24 7. yeah so that, that means on every rig you meet different kind of people different kind of the people the network will be amazing it's amazing okay. it is amazing and the, the community, the community. and everybody is doing something okay. so most of the time we work what we call a back-to-back -back shift on the rig. Mm -hmm. So, and everybody works 12 hours. Okay. So some work from six in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. Yeah. Another person takes over from 6 p.m. in the evening to 6 a.m. in the morning. How, how is social even on the rig? So it's actually good. Eh? So if you tend to be on the same rotation with someone, mm -hmm. usually when you are out from accommodation, they try to keep accommodation a bit further from where all the work and action is going on. So when you're in the accommodation after work, you interact with people. You actually bond better when you're on the rig because you get to spend a lot of time with people that on a normal day, after work, you go home, you drive, maybe you are in Kaswa, you drive and go to your house in Kaswa. Yeah. I'm probably at uh, Oyari 5, drive and go to your you just meet right We are all there. So you make a lot of good friends, you form a lot of bonds. And the nice thing about it is because we have the cementing engineer, we have the mad engineer, we have the SAPC engineer, we have the dynamic positioning guy who's the mm -hmm. DPO. The whole idea for the DPO is he's keeping the rig, his work is to make sure that everything that is functioning to keep the rig in location is good. It's, it's beautiful technology. Okay. So the DPO, like it keeps the rig at one station. So on the rig, you wouldn't feel like you're even on the sea. It's stable as you can have it, okay. unless the weather is rough and stuff like that. What's, what's the ratio of male to female there? Not too good, but it's improving. Uh, so I would, so. yeah, I would say maybe for uh, without this is not fact. This is just basically what you see. Yeah. Maybe from a ratio of for every ten guys, you see maybe one or two females. Oh dear. Yes. I, I hope it gets you. Really you know, it get, it get, it, so, it's so getting for better. Two hundred on there, you could have like twenty females. Yes, or less, plus or minus. Even minus. Yeah. <laughs> yes, plus or minus. Yeah. Could be ten. Yes, and it's a mixture. So we have some as part of the kitchen crew, some of as the rig crew, yeah. some as the engineers running the jobs yeah. and things like that. So, so everything is structured. Everything is structured out on the rig. Amazing. So you have the OIM, which is the offshore installation manager, who is for the vessel, mm -hmm. and you have what we usually call the company man. So the company man is the representation of the drilling, or, or sorry, the company, like the Talos, the ENIs, the Exons, the Shells. So he's the one who looks after all the operation that goes on yeah. on the rig, representing the company. And then we have the OIM. So the OIM has his crew. So they have the drilling crew, they have the subsea crew. They have the maintenance crew. They have the electrical guys. Mm -hmm. They have the guys who keep wow. the engines life, running. Life on the rig is it's, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. We have everything you so can you imagine out there. Anything you find on land, yes, you it's, will it's find right it out there. there. Yes, it's amazing. That's and beautiful. we we try and entertain ourselves as well. So. Okay, so you have parties on Man, there. Why not parties? We parties is a bit wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I parties mean, are a bit wild. Yeah, no, it's social. So. I remember sometimes when I'm on the rig, when I used to be on the rig back in the days. Yeah. After work, the guys would meet up together, and play video game. I still like to play my video games. Oh. Yeah, we interact, okay. chit chat. You get to know people. You get to you get to meet people you've never met before. Yeah. And sometimes, as time goes on, From it gets a bit wherever in the world. Wherever in the world. 
you want Indians, you find them there. You mm -hmm. want Pakistanians, Pakistanians, yeah. you find them there. You want uh, uh, whatever Cameroonians, you find them there. Everybody. There's everywhere, and it's, a, it's such a global industry. Has it helped you to get more social, or otherwise? I think yes. So. If you want to be isolated, you can be. If you want to be social, you can be. Because you work 12 hours. After 12 hours, you can go into your rooms. And the rooms are beautiful. Even though the beds are small, the rooms are beautiful. Yeah. You, and the rooms like are so quiet. Hotels. Yes, it's like a cutie hotel. By the time you come back, it's all nicely cleaned and everything. All oh. good to go. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah life so is the good out there. Are also there. Everybody. Every kind of career. Every you can kind find of your space in the ring. Yes. You always talk about this on Energy Quest. Mm. That every kind of career does have a space in the oil industry so yes. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy you've raised no it is part. it yeah. is they do they do everyone the only not too downside but the only trick about it is the industry doesn't take too many yeah of course exactly it's not too many people mm -hmm. so you usually like let's say on the rig you might have a day drilling supervisor a night drilling supervisor a day completion engineer, a day a night completion engineer. Yeah. Or and then you probably maybe have an assistant and stuff like that. So certain roles are just limited. Which kind of roles handle the environmental protection issues? So these are EHS guys. So our health safety officers. So what we tend to do is the company tends to have one mm -hmm. and then the rig also tends to have one. Is it prioritized? It's more than prioritized. Okay. It's so key. And every day before, so what we do is we communicate with the rig every day. Like every morning we have a meeting with the rig, but during the day there's a lot of communication that goes on with the rig. But every morning we have our morning meetings with the rig and safety is always the first discussion we do, we, we, we have in the morning. So we talk about how the day went, whether there was an incident that happened, no incidents happened, how's the welfare of everybody. We do what we call like a card system where everything you see or anything you come across that you think is not right, you put it on paper, you share it. Mm -hmm. It's taken seriously because what the guys do is that if you read all the safety things that are going on on the rig, a smart safety officer can see a trend. So when you see a trend where there's people complaining about slippery floors or people complaining about their shoes not being, giving them the grip they need when they are walking and stuff like that. Safety mm -hmm. officer could see immediately that there's a possibility that somebody might slip and hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. So then we need to start doing something. And then the guy is proactive. So the, safe, like the safety part of the rig is so paramount that when you get on the rig, you are hammered with it. And everybody is trained when you start an industry or when you get out there to have the power and the ability to stop a job if wow. you think something is not right. Are you able to do these jobs till retirement or you have to go if, off along the line? If you are strong, you, you can. Uh, if you're strong, you can. It's about being young people. Yes, okay. if you're strong. How do the young ladies do it there when they need to have kids and all those childbearing seasons? Yeah. Are they able to go and come back? Yes, do I've they... seen a lot of women who go in, have kids, Kids grow up and they come back out again, come okay. and work, go, look after their kids. So it, it's more the support as the woman. You need the support. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, I work with very brilliant women out there and then they've okay. managed to balance that life of theirs. It's not easy for them because obviously a mother leaving the child at mm -hmm. home is difficult. But then I've seen them come out there and you spend 28 days, full 28 days work every day. And when you come home, you have your full 28 days. So you can spend which, all the which, time which you good. want with your kids and the loved ones and things like that. Other locations have developed a structure where you work two weeks on the rig and, and you spend weeks four off. weeks, I actually think, four weeks off. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's quite um, a high-paced, intense environment. So you always need to be not on the edge. You always need to be active all the time mm. so there's one thing the when you're working you're working you work we are working you're working and there's something i remember there was one training we had offshore some time ago and then they coined this interesting topic it's called chronic unease so you actually think about what if what if what something can happen i've already done this before what if something changes would it change how i'm working or will something go wrong or something so you're constantly 
being not hammered, but you're constantly being encouraged to be on the lookout, to be alert, to be engaged, and things like that. So, and then because the work is in phases, everybody knows what they need to do next. So we usually have pre-tower meetings. We have um, pre-meetings where you have to do, go through whatever you need to do before you do it. We issue work instructions yeah. to the guys that this is what you're going to do. And so when you know your work is coming up next, you will prepare for it. So our work is, so sometimes people think or feel like the oil and gas industry is like the army. Yeah, it looks yes, like it. Yes. But if you approach this technically there, how easy is it for you to take out managerial roles after? Yes, that's, you know? that's, that's a good question. So it's a question a lot of people ask along the line. So one thing I learned during that transitional process for someone like me who now sits in the management position is that you would learn quickly that most of the time it's not everyone that wants to be there. Some people just want to stay in one place. They are comfortable. They do their work. They are very responsible. They go home and spend time with their family. That's it. Some people want to go out there, be the brains behind the job, telling people what they need to do and being able to change the course of what is going on. So for someone who thinks that, oh, this drilling we are doing, we could do it faster. Mm -hmm. Then he comes up with an idea. If like, no, I can't push my idea until I'm somewhere like this, then I can be able to channel that energy there. So everybody and what they, they want to get into in terms of management. So what our system does is our system regiments how you can get there. So let's say you are a well side drilling engineer. You know that as a well side drilling engineer, if you train very well, the next stage is you probably either will come into the office to come and do the drilling engineering planning and design and all that, or you can go on and be a drilling supervisor. Okay. But you probably have to go to be a night drilling supervisor because you can be a day supervisor. So, so the state, the levels are there. So, okay. you, so wherever you get into a company, for the young engineers, take your time, look at the structure of the company, see where all the branches of the company is in terms of going up career-wise, and envision where you want to see yourself. And work that process that's to get there. We that's the intentionality about, you yeah. talk about. Yeah. But what's been your difficulty in, the, in your transition? So the difficulty in my transition has been more to do with honestly dealing with the people side. Why honestly, is yes. Because if I'm working on equipment, all I can do is tell the equipment, do this, do that, do that, or I need to do the maintenance on this to know that this will happen and all. Then the equipment would do exactly what I tell it to do. Okay. But then now when you are dealing with people, you first of all, maybe let's say a drilling engineer comes to the office and then he comes to the office early in the morning and he needs to deliver a, a, a program to you by the end of the week. He's delaying on delivering the program. So you need to go to him and go like, listen, you need to get a drilling program done. I need mm -hmm. it signed by today the there because of timelines and stuff like that. But the guy is probably having marital issues at home. So he's, he's lost his focused. mind, he's not focused and stuff like that. So as a manager, you need to have a lot of emotional intelligence. Okay. You need to be able to assess the situation. You need to, especially if you know that the person is someone who is very effective and all of a sudden there's something going on with a person which is not right. You need to look at it and go like, okay, no, there's something wrong What's with this person. Really do I here? give this guy some time off and let someone take over the job? Or do I talk to him and find out whether he still wants to continue and get the job done? Or do I find a way of, because the job has to be done. Mm -hmm. So dealing with people and managing people and like you being the guy there, mm -hmm. you have the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So you know how everything connects to each other. Yeah. Because in the same way I'm looking at that, my boss is also looking at me at the of same course. time looking at other people yeah. as well. So I have the bigger picture. So when I'm looking at the bigger picture and I'm looking at the people and how they are feeling and, and how they are flowing. doing and it's not flowing as the energy and all that, you could see that no, there's something wrong. And that's where company culture is very important because mm -hmm. the company culture teaches people that, okay, if something is wrong with me, I'm comfortable enough to tell my boss and my boss can give me maybe like a day off to sort it out. Mm -hmm. And then I can come back and get my job and done. Effective. Yes. Or I can call my boss and tell my boss, boss, I'll get the job done for you, but I have some issues in the ho at home, so can I work from home? Mm -hmm. And your boss will understand. There's that openness. There's that ability to speak up yeah. when there's something wrong. 
So when that culture is there, it's easier for the people to interact with their bosses, interact with their managers and stuff like that. But for me, it was difficult because I say this all the time, but I think sometimes I just don't know how to engage people in their emotions. So I had to learn about emotional intelligence okay. to understand where people are coming from before. Because otherwise, when you come, naturally, I'm a workaholic. So when I come, I have all <laughs> guns. Like, yeah, you have, <laughs> you have all guns blazing all over the place. <laughs> so it's like, oh, we need to get this done. We need to get this done. done. But then you are working with the people and you are paying them They're for humans. their brains. They are humans. So you need to understand that there are certain things that would not let them function the way they need to function at that point in time. So you need to know when and how to handle them. Yeah. So then it comes and you need to, sometimes you need to be calm. There are some people, they have different temperaments. You need to know how to kickstart them a bit once in a while. They are the outliers who are the freelance guys who can just go on and on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. You just let them be, you don't micromanage them. So you need to understand all these things. So as being there, you know, you see all these people around you and... And how long did it take you to settle? Oh, it took a while. It took a while because I was in a leadership position in, in Expro before I left. And now coming to Talo and then starting again from scratch and then getting to that point, it was also a transition. Mm -hmm. And then now being where I am, it took a lot. And every day I think I learn because I still wouldn't say struggle. I still find it weird when people cannot understand certain things. And <laughs> yeah. So it's like, why are Can't you not? You just get this? Yeah. But then you need to understand that that is where you come in. Because the difference is you will be amazed to know that most people you look after, you are not their, they are just their manager, mm -hmm. you are not just their leader, mm -hmm. you are like the person they look up to. Yeah. So they are like, some of them are like kids, whatever you do, they watch and they see. So if you get into an office and as a manager, the cleaner cannot walk up to you, the young engineer cannot walk up to you, mm -hmm. or the senior engineer cannot walk up to you freely, yeah. and talk to you about stuff, then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many things that you see that when you start working with people and you treat them well, you manage them well, they work for you. They will do things for you that will amaze you. You don't need to even call them. Like, oh, boss, yeah, you, that's this. when the team spirit works. Exactly. So in my case like this, I have an amazing boss who is pretty good in how he manages people and how he gets pe the best out of people. And it's the same with his boss. His boss. So there's, there's that it culture triggers down. triggers down. You get it. Yeah. So we work in an environment where if you come, for instance, to my team, I think we are more of a family than we are colleagues. That's really good. Yes. And we look after each other. Mm -hmm. And I tell people who work in certain environments to learn that because you spend most of your young life and your in your prime years space. in the workspace, yeah. you have to be happy there. Sometimes people will tell you, oh, you need to love what you do to... Sometimes you could be doing what you're doing just to get by and make money. But when the family sense is there, you would enjoy being there. And honestly, you will, function, so long, you will function like better. Because it's not everybody that wants to be a manager. Some people just want to stay where they are and make their money and go, I can look after my family, I can take care of my family, you pay that's me it. well, that's it. It's a, you need to understand that. So when you are working with someone like that as a manager, you know that the person wants to be where they are. Mm -hmm. So you don't see the person as being stagnant or not progressing. Being unserious. Or yes. being unserious. That's just what the person wants to do. And they are good at it. So you create an environment for the person to constantly function in that place. Mm -hmm. And then you give the person the ability to move up a bit once in a while when they want to mm -hmm. and then train people. Someone will sit in the office and people will transition and go ahead of there. They don't care. They yeah, just want to do their fine. job. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay and that. there are some young guys who come in and you could see that initially they want to get to the top. So you then give the you give them the chance. You train them. Because certain mistakes will be made along the line. Sometimes when you are over ambitious and you are all... Because there's a lot of... Them I learned along the line being a very well driven, and I tell people sometimes that if you, if you interact with me or you talk to me for a bit, you realize I'm not your typical Ghanaian guy, because most Ghanaians would prefer to be all relaxed and chill, and people need to see me that I'm a cool, calm, good person, and in that case, that's what people think that we are. But some of us, 
by the things we've learned, the exposure we've had, we are very assertive. And sometimes it might come off wrongly in our culture. So you need to know how to manage that and know how to deal with people as well. Because sometimes it becomes, because for someone like myself, I say, who is very assertive and I can say things, I'm comfortable in my skin. I, I took time to study myself, so I know myself, I know my weaknesses, I know my strength. And when I'm helping people, there's this personality test I usually send to them to take. It helps you to know yourself. It's not cast in stone, yeah. but it gives you a fair idea of the kind of person you are. So when you are interacting with people, like for some of us are very confident and can speak our minds. If you're interacting with someone who is very touchy, that's where emotional intelligence comes in. You know you want to say what you want to say. And you need to know how you communicate. How you communicate is very important. Mm -hmm. So you need to know how that, all that works. And that's one of the most, not difficult, but tricky waters being in a leadership very position. Careful. Very, very careful. Because you have all sorts of people looking up to you. All sort of them looking up to you. I think this has been very informative. I've, I've enjoyed this conversation very, very much because it's taught me and it's taught my viewers a lot on the technical aspects that we always wonder about. And then also we have learned so much on things we have to do in order to have a good footing in management. You also learned about entry and the opportunities that are derived from school. So I think all in all, it's been an amazing conversation. Yeah. But in conclusion, just tell my viewers what, what you have for us and what, what will be your last words as far as the opportunities in here are concerned, considering that uh, there's a lot of advancements now and then new, I mean, new corners are opening. Yeah. So what, 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 what would you tell my viewers? So basically for the people who want to come in, or even the people who are in, mm -hmm. or people who are transitioning across different stages of their career, or want to come into the energy sector, or the oil and gas industry, and all that, it's important that your mindset is right. You need to know what you want first, you need to know what you want out of it, and you need to know how the work you're going to be doing is going to be impacting the lives that you're going to be working with. So. It's important that you understand what you are getting yourself into. The oil industry is, is, is unforgiving of certain things, but it's a brilliant place to work. So if you're going to decide to come into the industry or you're going to want to be in it already in it, and you're finding it difficult and all that, just know that it gets better with time. Okay. That's where experience comes in. So as time goes on, don't be afraid to express yourself. Don't be afraid to give off your best. Don't be afraid to make those mistakes. And that's where it's important to have people who guide you, people who are there to hold your hand when the need be. And in that case, you can make the transition and you can make the journey worth the while. And guys, it's not just petroleum engineers that work in the oil and gas industry. We have electrical engineers, we have mechanical engineers, we have computer engineers, we have civil engineers. We have chemical engineers, but even petrochemical engineers. Even we have outside engineers. Outs and... Yes, yes. So it's important that you talk to the likes of us or people already in the industry to try and understand all the branches of the industry that are there and then how to get in. And then we'll give you the opportunity or how we, we let you understand how you can do that and all that. But the industry is, is a brilliant place to work. It's exciting for the travels because yeah. you get to see the world as well. And then you get to meet all sorts of people, people you never normally meet in your, your life as you go on. And then you also get to live the life that you want by getting paid well as well. So it's mm, very that's important. A juicy yeah, it's right? the juicy part. It's Obviously, very, very you are paid for your brains. Mm -hmm. The companies are not running a charity organization, they are paying <laughs> you for you your brain. For you work for and it, you're and well, you are paid you're for paid. it. Yes. Mm. But at the end of the day, my last words would be. Enjoy what you do. Love what you do. It's amazing. I say this everywhere I go. I never work a day in my life. I enjoy what I do. It's when I tell people after my time off that I miss going back. To, I miss work, and I, I'm, I'm excited going back to work. Like I'm getting back to work. Like how do you know? Are you all the difference? No, it's not. Just enjoy what you do. Honestly, enjoy what you do, and don't be concerned about the money at the early stages. It will come because if you develop yourself and your brain is more advanced, the company would pay for that advancement in your exactly. brain and what you can deliver. So if you can't deliver, they won't pay for what you can deliver. And make sure 
you also enjoy yourself while you're doing that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think time and again, we've spoken about this on Energy Quest, being intentional with, in everything that we do. And today, we have also learned again about the fact that your purchases in the energy sector are not for engineers. They are not for only the high limit. It's for every kind of person. Because he's, he's opened our mind to the fact that the rigs have everybody on there, chefs on there, their cleaners on there, their types of engineers on there, their geologists. Yes. Every kind of person is on there. That's a whole town and a whole community on its own. So you have an opportunity on there, and I do too. And yes, today we have learned well what actually happens on the rig. I hope that your mystery is unraveled in your head now, because you know that it's just about drilling techniques, technologies, 